Hi and welcome. We will now continue with our Cochrane Gambit and I hope that you have had a chance to play some games with this Gambit and that you have been winning a lot too, of course. But we have a lot to go through, so let us move on. As you probably already know, it starts with the moves e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, knight takes e5, d6, knight takes f7, king takes f7, d4, and now the new move today, g6. This is perhaps Mo Black's most popular response to this gambit. The purpose of this move might not be too difficult to understand. Your object is of course to find a safe place for the king. White continues with a classic development of the pieces with knight c3. In this position it's important to understand that white is not in a hurry. Although we don't have all the time in the world, just remember not to rush it. So instead of immediately attacking in the center with our pawns by playing f4, e5 or perhaps even g4, you have to make sure to position all of your pieces properly. Except king g7, the move we will focus on today, black sometimes chooses to play bishop g7. White continues with this plan of developing and by playing bishop e2 followed by black's d5, an attempt to break white's control of the center. The last thing white should do here is to capture d5, which leads to a loss of his strong center. Instead, we play e5, knight e4, knight takes e4, d takes e4, and white castles kingside. A successful attack requires the cooperation of all your pieces. By castling, we activate our rook at the same time as we protect our king. Black copies white and develops his knight to c6. Instead of countering and protecting his d pawn with his c pawn, white protects and simultaneously develops his bishop by playing bishop e3. Black continues with h5 with a plan to open up the h7 square for the king, so that he opens up the possibility to play bishop a6 and thereby neutralize white's attack by exchanging his pieces. But this move is far too slow, because now, when white has developed his pieces, he starts his attack by playing f3. Furthermore, an exchange follows on f3, followed by bishop e6 and c4. This variation clearly shows the advantages of this gambit, because it isn't about quickly gathering all of your pieces and orchestrating a random attack, but instead looking to use your biggest advantage in the center to force black down on his knees. This was all for me, and I'll see you again next week with a new variation in the Cochrane Gambit. Don't miss that, see you then.